when we look at Anne Mosey and her acquisitional frame of reference, we're looking at focusing on performance components. So we're definitely looking at a bottom-up approach. Um, this is different from many of our occupation-based models where we're taking a top-down approach and looking at the occupation and then the pieces that need to go into that in order to make that occupation happen. Instead, with a biomechanical rehabilitative frame of reference, we're looking at the pieces first, what things need to happen for this person to gain uh, the ability to perform um, their everyday activities. Now, even though this is a bottom-up approach and it's very reductionistic in its focus, um, occupational therapists have always uh, focused on w the, the occupational behavior. So this is very much rooted in occupational behavior. We just looked at it as we need these pieces in order to produce the occupation uh, that the person wants to do. So there's two subsets of skills that Ann Mosey says a person needs to acquire, and that's task skills, which would be more of our biomechanical things, and then interpersonal skills, which take us down the line of some other frames of reference that we've talked about that, that go into this, uh, this whole acquisitional frame, which is kind of a blending of a bunch of different frames, or actually a starting point for the beginning of several different frames of reference. Um, and so Ann Mosey looks at all those different roles that a person might need to have and the pieces that go into that, and that's where those pieces from the biomechanical frame of reference come in. So the focus of the biomechanical and rehabilitative frames of reference are that alien persons with handicaps can be helped by persons who understand their needs. Now you can tell this is a bit of an older bit of language here when we're talking about ailing persons and handicaps. We don't really use those, those terms anymore. Um, but you can also see that this frame of reference is very therapist focused. That it's um, all about what the therapist can do to the client to make them better. Um, and it's not so much client centered. It's a little more therapist directed, therapist centered. Now Macmillan, um, another um, theorist, talked about how we can use a biomechanical frame of reference within an occupation based approach. And this is where um, Colin Tufano you know, have the idea um, that what we need as we're occupational therapists in the clinic is that we need to take an occupation-based model and a frame of reference or a few of frames of reference and put them together in order to get a complete picture in order to treat clients. And Macmillan was saying the same thing. We need to have an occupation-based approach when we're using the biomechanical frame of reference. So a biomechanical frame of reference can be useful in assessment, intervention, and evaluation with people who have occupational performance deficits. Okay, so for real, stop the video right now and take a moment and write a pro-con list, okay? Um, write what you think are the cons for the biomechanical rehabilitative approach and what are the pros, okay? So just take a moment and do that, really, and then we'll start the video again. Okay, so here's my pro-con list, all right, and there are more. We uh, could come up with a whole list of them, but for the cons, it is a reductionistic mechanistic view, and it does tend to lead one down the path of looking at pieces instead of looking at the whole person. It's therapist-centered, not client-centered. It's very tied to the medical model, which depending on what you're going for, could be positive, could be negative. Um, Reimbursement-wise, it's a positive thing. Um, and it can cause therapists to overlook key issues. But it's a helpful approach when it comes to evaluating performance skills and deficits that a person might have. And we can help pinpoint the source of occupational problems with this. It also is something that helps us talk to other members of the medical community because other pe people understand the biomechanical approach very well. Okay, and I thought Gary Kielhoffner summed it up very well when he said, Interventions based on the biomechanical model focus on the intersection of motion and occupational performance. So we're looking at that biomechanical model, but we're making sure that we understand that it's how motion impacts occupational performance. So for function, here's what we have for our definitions. Um, for biomechanical, it's to restore an individual to a prior arc of movement or a prior level of strength or capacity for work. And for the rehabilitative frame of reference, our focus is to adapt the method or the environment to allow task performance. You can see in the little cartoon, there's a guy who is adapting to being in the water by getting duck feet, and the duck is adapting to being on the land by getting human feet. Um, kind of the same idea that we're 
um, adapting people for the environments that they want to take part in. Disability in this frame of reference within uh, biomechanical is a restriction or a limitation in one of these areas and it's often tied to specific tasks. I don't have enough grip strength for opening jars um, or turning my tools at work. Um, the rehabilitative approach has the same uh, disability as, uh, in terms of that it's a restriction um, in a person's ability to do something, but it also involves a plateau of restoration. The person is at the point where they're not going to get any function back, and so we need to look at how can we help them engage in the best way that we can. As far as change and motivation, biomechanical looks at that changes through positioning, exercises, graded tasks, repetition, and practice. A lot of things that look more like practicing um, tasks, um, maybe activities, rather than actually practicing occupations. So we're working on performance skills rather than real occupations most of the time. This is where you see your cones and pegs come in. And this is where I think it's really, really important for occupational therapists to draw the lines for the client and say, don't just say, do that pegboard. Say, we are working on this with that pegboard so that you can use your pen to sign your name at your job or so that you can hold the mouse at your work on your job. Okay. Um, with rehabilitative approach, we are in manipulating the environmental conditions in order to cause change. Now with both of these, the motivation is just through desired occupations. It's a pretty general motivation um, term. So evaluation, we have um, all the typical things that you learn in the biomechanical approach, range of motion, strength, grip, pinch, coordination, um, balance, um, and then one of the um, standardized assessments that we have is the DASH or the quick DASH. Um, Rehabilitative approach, um, you may have heard of the functional independence measure. It is um, a way of quantifying a person's ADL performance. Um, and there are some other ADL measures out there as well, things that you'll, you'll be learning about. Now, just for fun, I'm not going to show this while running this video, but there, when you Google, once again, um, the biomechanical approach or biomechanical frame of reference, you come up with this Mythbusters video that is all about the laws of physics which is kind of interesting because in the biomechanical approach we do pay a lot of attention to the laws of physics. So just for fun, uh, if you want to um, get that on YouTube, just look up Mythbusters Frames of Reference or Frame of Reference and you will find it. Okay, and that is all for our lecture. Uh, if you go to Lessons, you will see a link um, that has a case study on Mrs. A or Ms. A. Your classmates today will be completing this case study with various kinds of interventions and how they might be applied to Mrs. A um, and um, the importance of those different types of interventions. We often think of strengthening exercises, range of motion exercises, but there's a whole myriad of other things we can do within the biomechanical approach and we're going to explore some of that with this case study with Mrs. A. So I encourage you to go take a look um, at the Google Drive link um, that we have on lessons for today. And hopefully I'll see you in class um, actually in two weeks because next week our class is online. Thanks. Bye-bye.